Previously, you've looked at pH and pOH, and you wondered if somehow there was a relationship between these two values. And somewhere deep down inside you, you know that there is, but you don't know what it is. Recall that pH and pOH are indicators of concentration of hydronium ions and hydroxide ions, respectively. High pH and high pOH is an indicator of low concentration and vice versa. Can pH and pOH be both high or be both low at the same time? Well, no it can't. Why? Because of the simple reason that hydronium reacts with hydroxide to give you water. So pH and pOH can't be both low at the same time, because if it was, it will form more water. What about pH and pOH both being high? Well, if the concentration of hydronium and the concentration of hydroxide are both low, water will dissociate to form more hydronium and hydroxide ions. By putting these two reactions together, what you realize is that water is behaving as a bronzed lauric acid and base by itself. It dissociates to form hydronium ions and hydroxide reversibly through proton movement, as shown by this reaction. Since it is a reversible reaction, then surely it must, surely in a beaker of pure water, there must exist some hydronium and hydroxide ions. And that is true. Water under, undergoes also ionization to form hydronium and hydroxide. So pure water is not really pure water. The equilibrium expression of this reaction can then be expressed as a concentration of hydronium multiplied by the concentration of hydroxide. Water is not present as a reactant because it is in the liquid state. This reaction, this equilibrium constant is special because it belongs to water, which is the solvent that we see very often, and it forms the basis of what we define as acids and bases. And we call this special K, KW. KW has a value of 10 to the power of negative 14. What then is the significance of this value? It tells you that the concentration of hydronium multiplied by the concentration of hydroxide at any one point in time is a constant value of 10 to the power of negative 14. Now let's negative log 10 this whole thing. The logarithmic laws tell you that this can be expanded into the addition of two logarithms. And guess what? This is pH, this is pOH, and the left side can be evaluated to 14. So this tells you that pH and pOH at any one point in time must be 14. What impact does this have on our understanding of pH and pOH? Since pH is a measure of acidity and pOH is a measure of basicity, it tells you that when a solution is strongly acidic, it is only weakly basic. It cannot be both strongly and acidic and strongly basic at the same time, and vice versa. If you somehow insist on putting a lot of hydronium ions and hydroxide ions into this beaker, all you will get is water. What about neutral solutions? A neutral solution is not really acidic or basic. That's because the concentration of hydronium and hydroxide ions are equal. In this case, that would mean that both hydronium and hydroxide will have to be in the concentration of 10 to the power of negative 7. So that when you multiply, you can get Kw. And that means that the pH of a neutral solution is 7. So that concludes our understanding of pH and pOH.